it's Lisa. I'm here with an art journal page today and I want to use some book paper for my first uh, layer. Uh, first of all though I do want to mention these brushes. I had a question about what where these blue brushes came from. They are Artist Loft from Michaels and they come in a set of six brushes so you get two of each of these sizes. I love this size. It's my favorite size but I'm going to use the larger one uh, putting some Mod Podge over this um, book paper. The I now sell uh, some packets of book paper over on my Etsy shop so if you're looking for some I have some real good variety. The ones I chose today um, are things that have a lot of text on them. They, what This one does have some little drawings of leaves which I think is kind of nice because I want to do something sort of springy here today. This came, I think, from the 1935 Roger's Thesaurus, a dictionary page. This is a book, something about um, uh, grammar sort of reference, and then this one was a gardening book, an old gardening book. So um, I've got lots, and I've got things with schematics and all kinds of drawings and stuff in, on the papers, maps, children's books, music prints. There's, there's different packets with different stuff in it. So we're going to use these on the art journal sort of as the background and even though they already are aged and have in some cases a very aged look, I want to add a little bit more aging to them because I'm not going to take them all the way to the edge and I don't want this edge to be white. I want it to have a little bit of an edge uh, color to it as well. So I'm going to mix in some antique linen ink into my Mod Podge and that will sort of color the Mod Podge so when it dries it's not uh, completely white. So let's do a little experiment and see how much we need to add. You can also do this with vintage photo but it takes very little vintage photo. You can very easily get something too brown and you can really work with any kind of ink. I just happen to be using the Ranger inks but it could be um, I need three it could be, um, you know, your Stampin' Up! ink refills or your um, archival inks, it doesn't matter. Now the white is going to disappear when the Mod Podge dries, so this is going to end up being darker, and those three drops might actually be too much. So let's see what that looks like on some regular white paper when it dries. That's not bad, but I could go probably even <clears throat> one more drop darker. And I'm going to be, of course, probably, oh, well, I got two more drops. <laughs> so we'll add just a touch more of this because I'm, I don't think I have enough Mod Podge in there. So I'm going to start with this old thesaurus and put the Mod Podge down on the paper on the, in the Strathmore Art Journal and then on the and also on the back of the book paper and then I put a coat over the top And so that'll dry a little bit darker than what it looks now. And I ran out, so I had to add a little bit more um, ink. If you're new to my art journal pages, I do voiceover as opposed to music. I ask uh, the question in one of the art journal videos a few months ago, and everybody who responded said they preferred the voiceover. So I prefer it too, rather than trying to figure out the music and um, try to type everything on the screen that I'm using. It's just easier to say it. And then this dictionary page had some great illustrations of leaves. I decided at this point whether I want to color those in or just leave them as a design in the background. And then this needs to dry after I get all the little areas covered good. And it's now good and dry, and I'm going to put a bird on here. And I had a little stick figure of a bird there. You'll, you'll see me create this with the um, paper, and um, then I'll be drawing around it. I guess you would call it a stick figure of a bird. It's about the most simplistic bird you can do. I can't draw. So I just have to do really simple things. So we're going to do our bird in some designer paper. This is some leftover from a 6x6 six six pad, some scraps. 
I think it was probably my mind's eye originally. Once I've broken them down, I don't know anymore for sure what paper's what. It's not quite as bright as I want, so I may add some markers or paint or stuff over the top of it. Now the next thing though is I'm going to be stamping some flowers in archival ink. This is my favorite permanent ink. It's become my favorite ink, period. It stamps on everything and um, just does such a fantastic job and with pretty much any kind of stamp. I have it in a few colors, but I still use the black and brown more than anything. I'm finding that I don't stamp things in color much. I color stuff in and um, when I do stamp, so I just don't tend to use the colors as much. But I've got quite a few of them. And I need a permanent ink here because there will probably be more Mod Podge coming. There will be some other markers and things over this. And so I need to keep this with uh, permanent ink. I don't know that I'll Mod Podge the whole thing. I don't actually do that. I, I'm sure I don't at the end. But if I, this were a canvas, I would. But since it's an art journal page, I don't add um, that at the end. Now, I'm sorry my head's in the way. I did not realize that when I was filming. But what I'm doing is just drawing in the leaves and the stems. There we go. Got the head out of the way. Just really simple little drawings from these stamped flowers. And I'm going to add a few clouds. I do have a cloud stamp, but rather than hunt it out, I decided to just draw them by hand. And I'm going to do a sunshine. And I'm drawing around the bird. And you have to let your Mod Podge get good and dry before you can mark on it. These are Faber-Castell uh, pens. You can buy them at AC Moore in packs, or you can buy them individually at a lot of the art supply stores. I think this is the F pen, and I use the M pen, which is a little thicker, for some of the lines, too. I realized I just didn't have them thick enough, so I went back over quite a few of them with the M pen. I use the F the most for fine. I don't know what M stands for. Medium, maybe? I don't know. Okay, we've got this dried because when you stamp on your Mod Podge surfaces, even though it's a permanent ink, you've got to give it a little bit of time to dry before you start uh, adding any color. So I'm mixing two paints. This was a Martha Stewart high gloss yellow paint and then her pearl paint in an orange color. I think it's pumpkin. Not sure about that. It's the only orangey color, I believe, in those pearl paints. Um, but I mix those two together to give myself um, a color for my sun and some of the since I had so much of it, I thought I'd just go and paint some of the flowers. I'll have to go back in later and redo some of my black marks since I'm painting over them. Now I typically let things dry between my processes rather than using a heat gun just because I seldom get to sit down and do the whole thing at once or want to sit down and do the whole thing at once. I'm, I'm back and forth between here in the kitchen and making phone calls, doing stuff on the computer. So that's just my process. But you could, of course, uh, heat things in between to um, for the different layers to dry. Adding a few markers at this point, a little bit of color to the wings of the bird, and I added just a little bit of a blue-green color here. These are Faber-Castell Big Brush markers, and I I learned to do to use those and to do this in um, Christy Tomlinson's Behind the Art class, which is a wonderful class if you want to learn about all the different mediums and how to do everything. Now, I'm not using all her techniques here because, again, this is an art journal page. It's not a canvas, so I'm not putting that many layers on it. But I'm just coloring in my different um, flowers. And this, you know, is kind of um, a little more playful um, page for me and almost like a ch children's drawing with flowers and a bird and sun. Um, but I think what makes it work is having the book paper as a base. It makes it a little more mature page. Um, or a little more um, sophisticated page, I should say. We give our bird an eye. And I'm not going to do all this coloring on, 
on camera, but I just color in all the flowers in different uh, colors. And I turned this upside down so that I could paint the clouds with Anita's craft paint in the white metallic. If you've watched my other videos, you know it's one of my favorite things. It gives a nice shiny look to the white paint. It's a very translucent paint. And I globbed it on here though because I wanted my clouds to have some texture to them, but not too much texture since it's an art journal. There again, that's a difference in working with canvases. You, you can't put a whole lot of texture in your art journal. I choose not to. But I want my pages a little flatter. But the, these markers will move. You're, you can use your fingers and smudge them a little bit because of the Mod Podge base. And I am coloring in a few of those leaves, just in greens, to, and I really liked it. I didn't, I didn't color all of them. I just colored a few of them. Um, it just adds a little more dimension to the back of my, um, the background of my design. One of those markers is gone bad. It's the end has gotten messed up, and it's really dumping ink out. These are stamping up markers. Um, because I'm not going to put another layer of Mod Podge on here, I can use these because they're water-based. They would smear if I put more Mod Podge on there, as opposed to the Faber-Castell markers that dry permanent. And I pulled out every small Faber-Castell marker I had, some other marking pens, just to see what I wanted to work with. And what we're doing is just a little more drawing and detail to the flowers. Using some of the fine markers to, to do some of the detail that got covered up with the orange paint. And a little more de detail around the edge of the bird. And that was a stamped flower, but I, I had to kind of go back over it since I had, again, used paint. The paint covered it a lot more than the markers did. And the same thing around the clouds. And I'm going to add some white marker, and it's a Faber-Castell marker that has a different kind of tip on it for the um, the clouds here in just a moment. And I'm adding some white gesso to a few different spots here in the background so I'll have a place to do my writing. And here's adding the markers onto the clouds. Now I wondered if my um, flowers needed some grass. I hesitated about this. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put the grass because here again it gives it almost a little more juvenile kind of look. But I like the grass. I did just a little touch of it and I liked it so I just kept adding it. Now we're going to do a little bit more with stamping. I have these individual letter stamps that I got at Hobby Lobby. And they're back with all the rest of their stamps. And they come in a pack, and you're supposed to clip the letters together so that you can make form words and then stamp them. But I'm stamping shapes here, and I've found that I just like stamping each individual letter better anyway. So I have Be Happy and Fly Free. And then I'm picking out a few markers to use for writing. And so here's our finished page, going a little slower so you can see all of the design work on the page. Book paper background, stamped flowers, lots of coloring, and the bird paste, uh, cut and pasted out of paper. So thanks so much for watching, and if you're interested in some of the book paper, check out my Etsy shop at Lovely Layers Art. Thank you.